Hello Divination, thanks for joining us in this tutorial where I'll be showing you how to creatively use Divi's new built-in border settings. So this is the second part of the tutorial and we'll be handling six of the remaining examples. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Before we dive into the tutorial, let's take a quick look at the examples that we'll be showing you how to recreate step by step. So here they are. So let's start with the first example. So for this example, you will be needing a row with one column and within that column, you can immediately place your pricing tables module and add the several items to it. And then you can open the first item and go to the border subcategory and make sure that the top left has six pixels and the bottom left as well and then use zero pixels for the other side and then you can go to the border style and select the top border width and make it 10 pixels and choose a color of choice and then you can go to the box shadow subcategory and make use of a box shadow so you'll have to make these modifications to each uh, pricing table individually as we'll be showing you in this tutorial so we're now just completing the settings for the first pricing table but then we'll move on to the second one which is the middle pricing table. So I'm immediately going to the design tab again and I'll open the border subcategory and again at my rounded corners but in this case I will need six pixels for each and every corner and then I'll go to the top border style And again, add a border width of 10 pixels with a border color. And then I'm going to add a box shadow as well. And this box shadow is the same as the box shadow that I applied on the first pricing table. You can find all of the details, all of the steps. Uh, within the blog post, which you can find in the description below. So I'm just going to do the same thing for the last pricing table as well. I'm going to add a top right and bottom right rounded corner of six pixels and I'll be adding a top border style as well. And I'm using 10 pixels for that again and a color of choice. So I'm going to add the box shadow to this pricing table as well. Again, this is the same um, box shadow, so it has the same settings as the box shadow for the other pricing tables. And once I save the settings, I will be able to see what my result looks like. So let's move on to the next example, which is the following one. And for this example, I'll be needing a row with two columns and I'm immediately going to open the row settings and add a white background to the background subcategory and I can add a background image to the second column and I'll move on to the design tab and enable the use custom gutter width option and use a value of one. Next, I'll open the border subcategory and I'll use a border style for all of the sides and I'll use 20 pixels as my border width and I'll use a white color for it. And last but not least, I'm going to use a box shadow as well, which you can see on the screen and which you can find in the link in the description below as well. So you can find all of these settings within that blog post. So let's move on to the next example, which is the following one. Uh, we're going to place this video module within a tablet. And first of all, we're going to add a gradient background to our section. 
um, but you can choose which one you would like to add. And then I'm going to use a row with one column and open the settings of that row, go to the background subcategory and add a background color that is slightly transparent. And I'll move on to the design tab and open the spacing subcategory, add 2% to the top padding, 5% to the right padding, 2% to the bottom, and 5% to the left side. Then I'll open the border subcategory and we'll need rounded corners for each and every corner and we'll use 30 pixels for that. Then we'll scroll down and we're going to use a border style as well. Five pixels for each one of the sides along with a matching color. So then we're also going to add a box shadow with the following settings. So it's going to be pretty subtle, but it'll help us create a little bit more depth. And it is going to be an outer shadow as well. All right, so the last thing you will need to do is place a video module within that column. Um, you can either use a URL or upload one. So let's move on to the next example. So we're going to show you how to create this border on the existing image module over here. And we're going to start off by adding a border width of 25 pixels. And we're going to change the color for the top and the left side into the following one that you can see on the screen. And we're going to do the same thing for the right and bottom, but we're going to use another color. All right, and then we're going to the box shadow subcategory. And for this example, we'll be using an inner shadow, uh, which will help create that white space between our image and the border style. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the other image within the example. So we'll start off by adding the border style to each one of the sides. So the top and the left side have the same color in each one of the sides has a border width of 25 pixels. And we're going to add the box shadow to this example as well. Again, we're using an inner shadow that will help create some distance between the border style and the image. And then we're going to save. Now let's move on to the next example. And for this example, we'll be needing two rows with three columns. And I have already added a blurb module to the first column of the first row. So let's go to the design tab of that blurb module. We're going to make some modifications to it that apply to all of the blurb modules. So add 40 pixels to each one of the custom padding options. Then open the border subcategory and go to the top border and use six pixels for that and the following color code. Then open the bottom border style and use four pixels along with this color code. And last but not least, you will need to add the same border style of two pixels to the left and the right side. Here we go. Then I'm just going to save that blurb module and I'll clone it 
five times and place it in the remaining columns of both my rows. So the modifications that we made up until now were modifications that counted for each one of the blurb module. So I don't have to, you know, apply them separately to each one of them. I can just apply them to one and then clone my blurb module and make the modifications to each one afterwards. So I'll start with the first one. I'll go to the design tab, open the border sub category, and I will need the following rounded corners for um, the first blurb module of the first row, as you can see on the screen. And then I'll open the second blurb module of the first row and the rounded corners for this module are slightly different. So we're using 60 pixels for the bottom left and bottom right corner. And then I'll open the third one of the first row and use the following rounded corners. And then I will have completed my first row and I can move on to the second row. Here I go. So let's open that and go to the border subcategory again and I'll add 60 pixels to the bottom left and top right corner of this blurb module. Now I'm modifying the second blurb module of the second row. All right, and I have one blurb module left. So I'll just quickly add some custom rounded corners to that one as well. And then we'll be done with this example and you'll have a very beautiful result as you can see on the screen. So let's move on to our last example. And in this example, we're going to show you how to add this kind of Polaroid effect to an image module. So we'll immediately go over to the border subcategory of this image module and we're going to add 13 pixels to the top left and right border style. So I just did that for the top border style and I'm going to do the same thing for the right and the left side. Here we go, and then I'll add a border style to the bottom as well, but this one is slightly bigger. It's 60 pixels, and I'm using a white color for it again. And then I'm going to add a box shadow as well. This is going to be an outer box shadow, and it has the following settings that you can see on the screen. Here we go. So now I can simply clone this image module and place them in the other columns of my row as well and then just simply change the image by selecting another image within my media library. And I'll do that for both um, image modules within this example. So here we have the result and let's take a final look at all of the examples that we've shown you how to recreate within this tutorial. So we've mainly focused on recreating all of the border settings and this will help you understand the border settings in a better way. Well, that was all for this video. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to our social media channels so you'll get a notification every time we have something new for you. Thanks again for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.